In today's session, I will be creating a small tool that moves the mouse pointer from any point on the screen to some other random point. The, the idea is just that the mouse pointer moves on the screen. The reason for this movement to happen, originally I was inspired by this, uh, some post that I saw in LinkedIn or somewhere where people were just attaching some, some toy or something that moves to the physical mouse to keep it moving. Uh, kind of to trick some uh, employee monitoring s uh, software that was running on the laptop and it was tracking whether the mouse is moving or not and then somehow the employer would keep track of employee activity by using that as a measure. So I found it uh, funny that people were <laughs> using actual physical solution for this. And uh, of course, I don't think it makes a lot of sense to just move the mouse as a way to solve that because most employee tracking tools also will take screenshots and will resource like key, will identify keystrokes. However, I can also see some value in the tool in the fact that uh, some systems uh, are set in a way so that after a certain amount of inactivity, the whole system will uh, lock itself. Uh, and that makes sense. In, when you're in the office, but uh, I found myself living alone in my house and sometimes I go take a, a coffee break and I come back and my computer is locked and there's no way I can change that for because it's something that only admins can do. So if the mouse was moving, uh, then it would have not locked. So that's another scenario where this tool can be useful. Let's go and work on this and see how it goes. I'm going to start by creating a repo this is going to be an open source uh, tool so I'll just make it a let's make it a new repo this is, this is going to be moving your mouse so let's call it uh, mouse mover though I don't know uh, let's uh, get ignore For the software I'm going to be using Java so let's create this uh, repo that's a uh, that's where you will find all the code when it's ready. Now that this uh, I created this repo, then I will use my uh, GitHub desktop and I'm going to clone this repo and then there we go. Cloning it. Now, one thing I like to do if every time I create a, like a new repo like this, uh, it will just come here to the git ignore file and open it with uh, any editor and do some more one more thing uh, go to git ignore oops git ignore.io and this already has like a, because i selected java for the git ignore it's already like a loaded with a bunch of uh, default uh, java files that i don't want to push on my git commits but uh, I like to use this other tool. It's uh, a little bit more comprehensive and also it lets me do something like, okay, I'm going to be using Eclipse, let's say. So I can do that. Uh, who knows? Maybe I want to be using uh, Maven for this project. I don't think it's the case, but uh, let's uh, play with the idea. So I can take this whole thing and then just, uh, just paste it here and then I'll have a more comp comprehensive git ignore file. Uh, I, I really like doing this type of thing. I'm going to be com committing everything to the main uh, branch because I'm going to be working alone on this small project. Now I have a more comprehensive uh, Git ignore, as you can see. Uh, finally, let's see, I'm going to be using, like I said, Java and uh, Eclipse as my IDE, which uh, is just a one option of many. Uh, let's create a new Java project. This, uh, let's find a location for this project. And in this case, oh, I know, I know to, I want to put it in the repo that I just created. And yeah, that's it. This is not gonna be a Maven project. So just <laughs> don't keep your hopes too high. The, the software I want to make here is so simple, no need so basic what it's supposed to do right so let's start by trying the general idea just make the mouse move from one point of the screen to the other 
So now that I have my project here, I'm just going to go and create a new class for the proof of concept. Let's try uh, initially just make a main class here with the main method and uh, just give it a try, see if we can make the mouse move from one side to the other. I don't need to know how to do it by heart. I know I'm going to be using the robot class, which comes in, if you're using Java 1.7 or higher, it's already in the uh, Java uh, framework, right? So no need to import anything from external repositories. It's already there. And I can just uh, Google Java move mouse cursor. I'm going to find some, uh, yeah, proposals here. And uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. Basically, I just first have to, of course, have a robot object uh, from the robot class that as you see is already in the Java AWT. Then I need to put the whole thing instead of some try catch, of course. There's a potential exception being thrown here. No problem. You can, can handle that too. Then, and here's the Here's the thing. I'm going to be using that uh, robot object with the method mouse move, and then I'm going to be passing a, a value for x coordinate and a value for y coordinate. That's it. Followed by a yeah, the, a sleep, but that's a let's go one thing at a time. So I want to move. Let's say I want to move to uh, 100. Uh, pixels 100 so this this the coordinates start counting from the top left corner of the screen it's going to be 100 pixels uh, on the x-axis and 100 pixels on the y-axis so the cursor is going to end up like a, on the near the top left corner of my screen so for now let's see if we can do that so let's uh let's run this and see boom exactly the mouse magically appeared in the top left corner yes so this uh robot class is executing the mouse move method and sending it to where I want it to be. So far, so good. Now, uh, I want to make sure this thing is going to be moving from one side to the other, or, or from yeah, at least one spot to the next one, right? So what I can do is, yeah, I don't care about, let's say, the, let's say that I don't care about the y-axis, but I want to move the the this other axis so let's say i'm going to be using a, a, a variable i'm going to call it uh, coordinate x and it's going to start with a value of 100 then of course i'm going to get i'm going to put this inside of a a, a while a loop because i wanted to just keep going back and forth right so I'm going to move first to that uh, original position where the x is going to be the, or, or the chord x is going to be the position of uh, x axis. And now I need to change the value of uh, chord x. Let's say I want to make it 200. So I'm going to do uh, I'm just going to add 100 to the value. However, I don't want it to be more than 200 because I, don't, I want the thing to go forever to the right. So at some point I want to just, just go back. Actually, but just moving once 100 pixels to the right, so I can already on the next iteration go to the original position because now I'm going back and forth. I just want to move the mouse pointer. I don't care exactly where. So right here I could already just say, okay, uh, I don't know, I can, I can do something simple like an if. Uh, coordinate x, uh, it's uh, at this point it's going to equal 200, so this is going to be the condition. Uh, then make chord x go back to the original value. It was, well, I could just, uh, just say minus 100. So I'm, I'm doing plus 100, and if it's already in 200, then make it, make it minus uh, 100. Uh, actually, because uh, because of the logic flow, I should put this like this. Yeah. There. So there we go. Is that are they going to be one hundred, and we're going to add a hundred more? 
or it's going to be 200 and I'm going to subtract 100, either or. So these two values will be iterating on each iteration. Now, because this thing, if I, if I try to run this now, this is going to be super fast and uh, I will lose control of my mouse pointer, actually. If I, do this. I need to add uh, inside of this while uh, loop a thread sleep. This uh, accepts a value in milliseconds. Let's do it. Uh, let's do it five seconds. And because this throws exception, then we can we can take care of that. Cool. Let's see how it goes. So yes, now we see the mouse pointer on the top left corner. And after five seconds, it goes to a little bit to the right. So it's a hundred pixels to the right. And then after another five seconds, it then moves back and then it's going to keep on doing that forever because it's in a while true uh, loop. So I'm just going to just uh, stop this thing. Oops, uh, from here, just to kill the process. So these proof of concept is already working. We know that this is the, what we need to, the software to do. So far, so good. Now we need to package it in a little bit more user-friendly fashion because we're not going to launch Eclipse every time we want this to run. So this was the proof of concept. There we go. And now let's move to the next step. Now I want it to be a window, right? So let's uh, make new window. It's going to be an application window. Let's call it uh, small window, right? Nice. So now we have a, a nice little window that we're going to be using. So we see this already has like a like a main method uh, running a thread over here to launch the window. This uh, constructor over here calls like the initialize uh, method that is here, so it makes everything visible. So now I can go to the design view. Let's say I want the title of this thing to be mouse mover, a little bit conspicuous, right? But uh, it is what it is. And then I want this to not be resizable by the user. Oh, what did I do? There. Not be resizable by the user. And then maybe get a little bit smaller. We don't want to take a lot of space here. Also, just to make it uh, even more evident of what this is. I can take a, where is my label there? I can take a label, just put it there. And let's call this mouse mover and then make it uh, a little bit bigger. I think something like that will do and then maybe align it a little bit uh, there so it can be a little bit bigger yeah i don't know that's uh as far as i can go with uis don't ask too much from me and uh, so far so good that's all we need from i mean we don't need the ui to do anything because the ui is just to launch it and have some element on screen that we, we can use to close the the application later no need to for buttons or anything at least not on this stage of the application so far so good I can save changes and uh, i can try this to see if this thing runs and we see how it looks like yes they will have a little window that we will be able to just move minimize or close even and now the thing is i want to call the logic that we just wrote uh, from this window now, I will have to take a couple of additional steps because uh, if I try to take this logic, let's give it a, yeah, let's, let's give it a try just, just to show you how, what will happen. If I go to this nice little logic that we have already here, this is what we wanted to do. And I just, uh, let's say, paste it over here. Well, I cannot, uh, yes, there. I can paste the whole thing there. And, oh, so far, so good, right? It's uh, compiles, no, no errors, right? No problems. If I run it, 
it will run yes so we can see the mouse pointer already it's uh, right next to the and then it already moved to the next position so it's working so, so far so good but if I want to close this thing it's not closing aha uh -huh. because the the while true infinite loop got a hold of my thread so the same thread that is showing up the uh, window is now captive is stuck inside of this loop and, and it never goes out so i can doesn't matter how, how many other actions i want to take with that window any, any other elements i want to interact with in, the, in that small window the thread will not see those uh, attempts of interaction until it gets, comes out of the loop that where it's stuck and because it's a while true it will never come out so what do we do with this solution is just uh put the logic somewhere else let's uh let's make another class uh, and by the way and run it as a separate thread that's the the point here so mouse mover i'm gonna just call it that because that's what i'm gonna go this 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 class is gonna just have the logic of the mover uh, i'm going to implement a runnable ba -ba -ba. Uh, Events runnable, and uh, what's the problem here? Yes, of course. And then I will have to implement the method run. So when you want to create a class that was going to run on a separate thread, you had to implement runnable and uh, over overwrite the the method run, and that's uh, that's what's going to run on a separate thread. Uh, that's what we're doing this. So now I can go back to this window. I, and this code that's not doing anything good here because it's just uh, making my whole thread stuck. If I put it inside of the run method, this is going to be a different story. Uh, by the way, this main method that I have here, I can already go away because I just copied the code already. Yeah, so now I have it in mouse mover. Now, uh, inside of this mouse mover window, I am throwing uh, one of the yeah i'm basically running this thing but uh right here before the main method exits so this is this is already like throwing uh one thread and here i'm gonna do a, a new mouse mover and i'm gonna call the run method and yeah so those are gonna be two separate threads so now Let's see how it goes now when I run this thing. So now, yeah, it is running. We see the pointer uh, moving, yes. And if I want to close now, yes. Now it closes from the from the little X because now this is two separate threads. They're not interfering with each other. Cool. My application so far, it's uh, it fits uh, all the criteria that I wanted to fit. It's move the mouse on its own. Oh, um, ideally I should parameterize some of this stuff, but because this is just a basic uh, version, initial version of it, I'm going to make it 30 seconds. So it just, uh, it's not so annoying uh, between 30 seconds is more than enough because my screen is not going to block until more than 10 minutes have passed, but that's just give it 30 seconds. Uh, e enough, uh, but also not, not too annoying so in case I want to more move my mouse to close the, the window right i guess i still can't do it without the thing with losing control of the mouse okay let's uh, save this thing and then this is going to be okay this is the window it's working over there now finally now this is open source and all this code is uh, available here in the repo it can be forked it can be downloaded it can be read but i want to make it a a version that you can use even without having to compile the code yourself so let's say okay so so far so good and now i just want to make a version that is executable by the user runnable i make a, a runnable jar file so i can go here and go to export 
and then it's going to be a runnable jar file and yes the mouse mover window is where my main class is so that's what i'm saying that's, a, that's how it will launch uh, export destination i'm just gonna put it somewhere uh, it doesn't really matter uh, i'm gonna do a temp folder over here and it's gonna be the mouse mover version one actually or 0 0.1 or whatever it is so there yes yes whatever so now if I go to that um, folder I just made, and I, that's my jar file there. If I execute this, because it's a, yeah, there we see, it's running from outside the IDE. I can no longer require the IDE. And uh, I can only close the window from there. So it's a standalone software already as it is. So now this is gonna be a new release uh, for the user. So let's say this is going to be the mouse mover 0.1. It's a very early version, very early version. Uh, and then first and then here I can attach my, the files that the user can download if they want to execute and then I can just publish the release apparently yeah there we are uh, by going to yes this URL must more releases 01 this is my latest release maybe in the future we'll add functionalities to this like uh, parameterizing maybe maybe make it running in an automatic mode where the user if, if the user is not doing keystrokes or or mouse movements, then we'll automatically detect that and, and we'll trigger the, the mouse movement without having to launch it and close it every time when you need to use it or not. I don't know, it doesn't matter. Uh, so far, so good. The goal for this uh, coding session is achieved. I hope you enjoyed seeing how it's done and uh, maybe if you use the mouse mover, let me know. <laughs> for more programming tutorials, coding sessions, examples, exercises, go to qualityclassroom.com and subscribe to the channel.